A decade before c -sharp, Microsoft pushed a language called Visual Basic. This language went through several versions during the 90s, but then when Microsoft released c -sharp, they decided that they wanted Visual Basic to also run on the CLR, the Common Language Runtime. That, in fact, is why it's called the Common Language Runtime, because the idea Microsoft pushed with the CLR is that you would have multiple languages which you could compile to a standard bytecode format, which would then run on the CLR. The idea being that this would allow easier interoperability between different languages. As long as it could all run on the same CLR, the same virtual machine, then it becomes easier to have, say, a function written in one language be invoked by code written in another language. In practice, this hasn't panned out terribly well, because the problem is you can't just take any language and force it to run on the CLR. You end up having to change the language, at least in small ways, to accommodate the platform. And so Microsoft, to get Visual Basic to run on the CLR, they created a new version, which they called Visual Basic.net. And the basic problem with this Visual Basic is that it's now so similar to C Sharp, there's really no point for Visual Basic to exist. You can use one or the other, and they're pretty much the same language, just with different syntax. Consequently, Visual Basic.net has ended up being much less popular than previous versions of Visual Basic. The people who liked the old Visual Basic didn't like the changes and didn't want to have to learn a new thing, so they were very slow to adopt the new version, and everyone else mostly preferred Java, so they went with the thing that looked most like Java, which is C Sharp. The Perl language, which became popular in the 1990s, especially on Linux, was the first example of a dynamic language really making it big, especially on the commodity PC hardware. Before Perl, dynamic languages were hardly ever used because they had such a bad reputation for being slow. Perl didn't fix this problem per se, it was and still is a very slow language, but by the 1990s, computers were becoming powerful enough that for many tasks, the slowness just didn't really matter. Compared to the primary languages of the time, which were C and C++, programming in Perl was much more expressive. Per line of code, you can get a lot more work done, and this generally, people felt, made their jobs easier in many cases. This is reflected in one of Perl's slogans, which is, easy things should be easy, and hard things should be possible. You can see this slogan borne out in the Hello World program, which simply consists of the line, print Hello World. On the other hand, Perl has many critics. One of the criticisms is that Perl's support for object-oriented programming is very minimal and less than ideal. The most vehement criticism, though, is that Perl's syntax is way too complicated. This complexity clearly isn't reflected in the Hello World program, but it's actually quite easy in Perl to write lines that look like line noise, that is, a bunch of random characters to the untrained eye. On the one hand, this noisy effect stems from Perl being a highly expressive language. On the other hand, it stems from Perl's other slogan, which is, there's more than one way to do it. As critics of Perl, like myself, contend, Perl suffers from being one syntactical convenience heaped upon another syntactical convenience. And so you end up with this huge mess of conveniences, many of which interact with each other in confusing ways, that Perl code very easily ends up being unreadable, and there are simply too many complexities and conveniences in the language for anyone to learn and keep straight. People who stop programming in Perl for a while tend to forget whole chunks of the language such that they can't understand their code again when they look at it later. This doesn't happen so much in most other languages. The good news for people like me who hate Perl is that it seems to be dying. In the last decade, a number of languages have become popular which have the same expressiveness advantage of Perl, but don't share the same downsides. The language probably most responsible for killing Perl is Python. Semantically, Perl and Python at their heart are really, really similar, though I would say Python has a much saner type system and therefore has a much better approach to object-oriented programming. Whereas Perl is criticized for its overly complex syntax, Python is praised for its notably clean and simple syntax. This clean appearance is achieved largely by virtue of Python using indentation to denote blocks of code, just like we saw in Pigeon. So instead of, say, surrounding the statements of an if in curly braces, we just put those statements uh, indented in one level underneath the if itself. Again, pretty much just like you saw in Pigeon. Ruby is a more recently popularized language which is also killing Perl.
Like Python, Ruby pretty much is like Perl semantically, except it's just cleaned up a bit and presented with a saner syntax, though I will say I strongly personally prefer Python because I think Ruby syntax has too much of the convolutions of Perl. It's too much like Perl. Unlike Python, Ruby's success has come almost entirely in server-side web programming, that is, in writing the code that actually generates a web page when you visit a website. PHP is yet another Perl-like, dynamic-interpreted, semi-object-oriented language from the 1990s. Even more so than Ruby, PHP is used almost exclusively to generate web pages. PHP owes most of its popularity to the fact that, in the late 90s, it by far had the easiest learning curve if you wanted to get into web programming. And so even though the language is heavily criticized by many programmers today for being ugly and just generally awful, you can't argue with good timing. One more language that shares the basic semantics of Perl, Python, Ruby, and PHP is JavaScript. Despite the name, JavaScript really has no special relationship to Java. It really is a totally separate language. This naming confusion stems from a marketing decision back when JavaScript was first created. JavaScript was created as a language to embed in the Netscape Navigator web browser such that web pages could include JavaScript code to manipulate the contents of the page. This feature became popular, so other browsers added support for JavaScript and web pages, and today JavaScript is still the only language supported by all the major web browsers. So JavaScript became popular because if you want to do certain things in a web page, you have no other choice than to use JavaScript. Aside from this, JavaScript isn't all that different from Perl or Python, though JavaScript is unique in one aspect, and that is that its support for object-oriented programming is based on what are called prototypes. Most languages which support object-oriented programming do so with a feature called classes. JavaScript doesn't have any such thing, it only has prototypes.